Welcome to this tutorial on using ROS2 with MATLAB and Simulink. Here's the learning path we'll be following throughout this tutorial. In this session, we will focus on the first core concept of ROS2, the ROS2 node. In this session, we'll cover the following topics. What is a ROS2 node? Creating a ROS2 node in MATLAB and Simulink. Discovering ROS2 nodes with domain ID. Robotic systems are inherently complex, consisting of various interconnected components that handle diverse functions such as perception, control, navigation, and planning. Each of these functions plays a critical role in enabling the robot to interact with and adapt to its environment. Within this intricate framework, a ROS2 node acts as a standalone executable that encapsulates a specific function. By modularizing these functions into nodes, ROS2 facilitates the development and management of complex robotic systems, allowing for greater flexibility and scalability. This modular approach also supports easier debugging and maintenance, as each node can be developed and tested independently before being integrated into the larger system. Additionally, a ROS2 node is language independent, allowing developers to leverage the best programming languages and libraries for each task. For instance, you can use C++ with OpenCV for perception tasks, MATLAB and Simulink for control, Nav2 for navigation, and Python for planning. This flexibility enables the integration of diverse technologies and tools, optimizing the performance and capabilities of your robotic system. Last but not least, ROS2 nodes represent the functional architecture of a robotic system, detailing the functions and their interrelationships. This functional architecture can be deployed onto the physical architecture, which outlines the hardware components of the system. For example, perception and planning ROS. Two nodes can be assigned to one hardware unit, while control and navigation nodes might be deployed on another. This separation allows for efficient distribution of tasks across different hardware resources, optimizing performance and resource utilization. Next, we will move on to creating ROS2 nodes in MATLAB. Let's begin with a Hello World project. We can start by opening the MATLAB Live script from the project folder. First, we will create a ROS2 node named Node Hello World. It's important to note that the ROS2 domain ID is set to zero by default. We will revisit this topic later. After creating the node, we can list all the available nodes on the ROS2 network. We will execute a loop for the ROS2 node at a fixed frequency by setting up the ROS2 rate object. In this example, the desired rate is set to 1 Hz. We will revisit the topic of ROS two times in a later session of this tutorial. During the execution of a for loop, we can observe that the ROS2 node operates at a consistent interval of one second. This behavior is achieved by setting the loop to run at a fixed frequency, ensuring that the node performs its tasks at regular intervals. Next, let's explore another example where we use a webcam to detect objects. We can start by opening the MATLAB Live script from the project folder. Similar to the last demo, we create a ROS2 node named Node Webcam, list all the available nodes on the ROS2 network, and set the desired execution rate to 5 Hz. We will then identify and list all available webcams and select an appropriate one for our project. Please note that accessing the webcam may require the MATLAB support package for USB webcams, which can be downloaded from MathWorks. By executing a for loop for the ROS2 node, we can stream and view the video feed from the webcam. Once we have the video stream from the webcam, we will then add a deep neural network to detect object.
In this example, we'll use a pre-trained YOLO network, which is available on the MathWorks GitHub page. This resource includes multiple YOLO models and example scripts to illustrate their usage. To proceed, we will execute a for loop that captures an image from the webcam at each frame. The loop will then detect objects within the image, annotate them, and display the results. Next, we will move on to creating ROS2 nodes in Simulink. We will begin by creating a Simulink model from scratch. Start by opening the library browser, then drag and drop the From Video Device block onto the Simulink canvas. By double-clicking the block, you can open the Block Parameters window to configure various settings, such as the webcam device, video format, sample time, and other parameters. Next, we will add a Video Viewer block to the model to display the webcam image. To proceed, click on Model Settings to open the Configuration Parameters window of the Simulink model. Modify the stop time to infinite to allow continuous operation. Set the solver to be a fixed step solver. Then, navigate to the Hardware Implementation tab and select Robot Operating System 2 as the hardware board. Next, add a ROS2 current time block from the library browser under the ROS2 folder. This will allow you to display the ROS2 time during the simulation. We will then run the Simulink model to view the video stream from the webcam. We can list all the available ROS2 nodes from within MATLAB. Please note that the name of the ROS2 node generated by Simulink is created automatically. Next, we will move on to discovering ROS2 nodes with the domain ID. As introduced before, the default middleware that ROS2 uses for communication is DDS, the Data Distribution Service. In DDS, the primary mechanism for allowing different logical networks to share a physical network is known as the domain ID. ROS2 nodes on the same domain can freely discover and communicate with each other, while nodes on different domains cannot. By default, all ROS2 nodes use domain ID 0. To prevent interference between different groups of computers running ROS2 on the same network, it is advisable to set a unique domain ID for each group. For example, the Perception node and the Planning node can be configured with the same domain ID when operating on the same hardware. Alternatively, the Planning node and the Navigation node can be configured with the same domain ID while running on different hardware. This ensures seamless communication between nodes that need to interact closely, regardless of their physical location. We will illustrate the concept of domain ID using some examples. First, we create three ROS2 nodes with domain ID 0, node 1, node 2, and node 3. Next, we create another set of three ROS2 nodes with domain ID 5, node 4, node 5, and node 6. If we list all available nodes on the network, only those with domain ID 0 will be visible because the current domain ID is set to 0 by default. To verify this, 
You can also check the ROS domain ID environment variable. If we set the ROS domain ID to 5 and then list the available nodes, we will only see nodes 4, 5, and 6 on the ROS2 network. We can also visualize the ROS2 domains using the ROS2 Networks Analyzer, which can be accessed from the Apps tab from MATLAB. By opening the ROS2 Networks Analyzer and entering the domain ID, you can view the available ROS2 nodes within that specific domain. Let's demonstrate the use of ROS2 domain ID with the TurtleSim example. First, launch TurtleSim using the default domain ID 0. Then list the ROS2 nodes from MATLAB where the TurtleSim node should be visible. We can temporarily set the domain ID to 5 by adding the ROS domain ID is equal to 5 as a prefix of the ROS2 run command. In MATLAB, by setting the domain ID to 5, the TurtleSim node is still visible. If we relaunch TurtleSim from the Ubuntu terminal, the domain ID will revert to 0. Consequently, we won't be able to see the TurtleSim node from MATLAB as MATLAB is operating under domain ID 5. We can also permanently set the domain ID to 5, ensuring that the TurtleSim node becomes visible again in MATLAB. I hope you now have a solid understanding of our ROS2 nodes, domain ID, and how to create ROS2 nodes in MATLAB and Simulink. Thank you for participating in this session. In the next session, we will explore the ROS2 topics. By the end of the session, you will have learned about topics and messages in ROS2. I look forward to our next session together.